So this video will just serve as an introductory look at string comparisons in C-sharp. So if you're a beginner programmer and you're starting to write some applications where you're trying to compare some strings, maybe you're looking up some examples online and seeing that there's a handful of different ways that you can do these comparisons and you're getting a little bit confused. This video will just touch on some of the basics for that and why you might want to use different variations of it. So let's jump right over to Visual Studio and get started. All right, so here in Visual Studio, I just have two strings declared, my string one and my string two. I have hello assigned to the first string and world assigned to the second string. So we as programmers know that these are obviously two different words and these strings should not be equal. But if we wanted to compare them and actually see if they were equal and get a Boolean value, how would we go about doing that? And I think th probably the most obvious way that people jump to is that they want to do a comparison like this with a double equal sign. And this is going to be the first example that we look at here. So let's go ahead and print this to the console. And when we go to run this, of course, as the comment suggests, and as we know that these two things will not be equal. All right, and when we run this as expected, we get a false printed here. So everything is all and well, but there's other ways that we could go do this string comparison. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste two more examples here. And this, the second one that we see here is just comparing my string one equals my string two. And of course, like all the comments say, <laughs> we're not changing these strings at all. So yes, these will all continue to be false, but this is another way that you could go ahead and do this. And the other way is using this string.compare method. And you'll notice that this looks a little bit more bizarre compared to just calling equals or doing this equality operator. So we're going to call this method compare, pass in string one and string two, and you'll notice that at the end, it's comparing it to zero. So let's talk about the couple of variations that we have on the screen. And I'm not gonna go ahead and run this and print things to the console, just because at this point, it's not gonna be super helpful. And let's go ahead and maybe reduce this so I can zoom in a little bit more and make that bigger for everyone to see. This first example uses the equality operator, which is double equal sign. And if we compare that here to the equals method on string, what's the difference between these two things? Well, this equals method actually allows us to pass in a comparison type and the C sharp or the Microsoft guidelines actually suggest that we do not want to be using equality comparison methods, any of the overloads that do not specify a string comparison. So it is important to note that this here just by what I was saying, implicitly tells us how we're comparing these two things. So you as a beginner programmer might not know if these two things are compared. Um, there's a handful of different variations. So there's ordinal, there's current culture, there's invariant culture, then you have case sensitivity. So if we make this a little bit more interesting and I put a capital O on the end of this, Maybe that's a bad one just because O's look the same almost. Capital H looks different and capital E, right? Are these two things equal? Well, if you look at this example on line five, you as a beginner programmer might go, well, maybe they are equal because they're the same word. They're just different casing. And if you ran this and it was false, you might go, oh, actually, maybe I'm not surprised. Like it's technically not equal, but what if you did want them to be equal? What if you were trying to look at some user input and trying to check and you don't care if the casing's off because maybe you're going to go change it later for them and you just want to do a comparison? Well, this equals overload that takes in the comparison type can actually help you a lot here. So we can do string comparison and you'll notice maybe it's kind of hard to see because the text is small, but we have string comparison. There's ordinal ordinal ignore case, you have invariant culture ignore case, current culture ignore case, current culture. There's all sorts of comparison methods here. And what we might want to look at, especially for performance reasons, is ordinal and then ignore case in this example. So just again, to fit it all on the screen for us, it would look something like this. And this here would actually give us the ability to do a case insensitive string comparison and that would mean that my string one and my string two are in fact equal. 
I'm going to come back to this in just a second because there's a bit of a catch here by using this syntax, and I'll show us how to fix that right at the end as well. If we jump to the third example and we use this compare method, the reason that this compare method exists and actually gives you an integer return type is because they can use this for sorting. So if you wanted to know if hello came before hello with a capital E and capital H, then when you go to run this comparison, this result that you'll get coming out of here will actually tell you which one comes before and which one comes after, or if it's equal to zero, then the comparison essentially is saying that these two strings are equal based on the comparison type. However, just like the example before and the guidelines that we have, we are not supposed to use overloads that don't have any string comparison put inside of them. So we do have access again to string comparison here. We could do ordinal ignore case again, and this would come out to being true now. So to quickly recap before I explain the little catch on this one here, the three variations we have are this first one with a double equality sign, and this is actually something I would suggest that you do not use. And again, this is because based on the coding guidelines that we have from Microsoft, we do not want to be using string comparisons with an implicit comparison type. Now, when I say implicit, it's because it's not actually explicitly written on screen here you might know that a double equal sign actually does mean an ordinal comparison that is case sensitive, but it's not written here explicitly. The second one that we have here is probably the most common way that I would say that people end up doing string comparisons and getting their string comparison type included as well. So this is probably the most common way. It does have a catch and I'm gonna come back to it in just a moment. And then the third example we have is usually what you would do if you are trying to sort or order strings. So if you're trying to check if they're equal, I mean, this will absolutely work. It will function the exact same way that this second example works. It's just a little bit more verbose. And if you don't care about the actual ordering, then this is maybe a little bit overkill to use. Okay, if we go back to the second example, there is a bit of a catch here and I just wanted to note it. So you'll notice that my string one, we're calling the method equals on my string one. If for some reason we had a null for my string one, see how the squiggly line just came up from Visual Studio? It's indicating that this is actually gonna be null. If we were to call this, this is actually going to throw a null reference exception. So I would actually change example number two. Let's comment it out. I also copied it. I'm just going to paste it directly below. What I would actually recommend doing is this. You put string, and we're going to call the equals operator right on the class string, and that's just going to be a static method we call, and we'll compare this way. Now when we call this part, if we're replacing example two with this, we actually can avoid null reference exceptions. And in my opinion, this is probably one of the safest ways that you can do your comparisons. In a follow-up video, I'll end up showing us the difference in performance characteristics of doing string comparisons with ordinal or using invariant culture. So we'll come back to that in a future video. But for now, I would recommend that you're probably going to want to use ordinal or ordinal ignore case. All right, so that was just a super basic look at three different ways that we can compare strings in C Sharp. And I just wanted to point out that if you are a more advanced user watching this, you might be rolling your eyes saying, well, Nick, there's all these other things we should be talking about for string comparisons. There's all these performance implications or there's we could be looking at spans and doing other types of things. For sure, we can absolutely do that, but this is just a super quick look for beginners, and hopefully this serves as a way that you can start building applications and doing better string comparisons than just using a double equal sign. So thank you for watching right to the end. If you're interested in working with strings, then this video right here is gonna be really helpful for you for your next steps.